Hi, welcome again. Today we are looking at open LAN displacement and tessellation implementation and also we are looking at triplanar mapping as well and how, how those two technologies work together and we can get a certain look. And also we'll discuss about the performance impact of both of those options as well. Alright, let's get started. Alright, now we are looking at our, our this mountain range and it only has a normal information. You can see there's no bumps. All right, let's try to add displacement support first. Before we do that, we need to enable tessellation in our master material. It's quite important, otherwise this effect don't want work. So in order to do that, let me find our parent material. So here we have our material instance we use in our landscape. And let, let me scroll down and we have this, this master material. I'm gonna double click that. And let's put it over here. And then I'm click somewhere outside of this screen. And from the this details panel, I'm searching for tessellation. Here I have selected flat tessellation, but you can select P and triangles as well and try to see whether it's working for you. Right, then uh, let me close this. So now we can work with our material instance. So here from the material instance, I'm gonna search for slope. So in open land, you can add displacement support for any layer you want, uh, whether it's auto layer or the, the manual paint layer. Here, I'm trying to do it for this slope layer. There's a checkbox called uh, use this displacement for slope. I'm gonna click this checkbox. So let me find my height texture. All right, this is my height texture. I'm gonna drag that into this place. All right, nothing happens. That's, that's totally fine. Then I had to increase this uh, displacement multiplier. All right, let's put something around 200. All right, now you can see there's a slight change in the in the landscape, but it didn't really didn't affect anything because uh, there is no additional vertices to do displacement. So that's what controlled by this slope tessellation multiplier. So just add one. So now we can see, now we get some information. So this is without it. And this is after we add that. Now we get more information over here so basically this is it this is all you need to know about how to use tessellation and displacement in open line so now let's try some other options uh, here we have the uh, triplanar mapping as well so here we can see now this is the look we are having but if we use triplanar mapping we can get a di different uh, look to our mountain range uh, even for the displacement so let let me try that here we have a checkbox called use planar mapping for slope so i'm going to enable that so now uh, we get a uniform kind of look like uh, because these, uh, this is a project to use in the world coordinates. And sometimes it looks better. From here, I think, uh, yeah, sometimes it looks better and sometimes it won't. Try to play with this with your landscape and check whether this is the, this is the look you are going for. And of course, we have the tiling factors as well. So we can control. This is the near tiling. Here it's around 200, but I can put it something around 1000. So I like 2000 and it works and we can for the distance and we can put something around like maybe 25,000. It's up to you. I don't know. It's too much, I guess. So now we add a bunch of things. So ultimately we need to think about the performance as well. So let's have a look at it. Uh, first thing, uh, I need to change my screen percentage to 100. 200 looks good, but it's certainly affect the performance. I think 100 is fine in this case. Right, then uh, let me go to full screen. So I'm going to type stat APS and also I'm going to use stat unit. So we can check whether the performance bottleneck is on the GPU or on the CPU. And now try to turn off some features and whether we can gain some performance by doing that. So we are almost, I mean, close to 120. Uh, we're getting uh, 110 some areas like 100 and when you're looking at here but when you look in the the mountain range we almost get 120 frames a second uh yeah i, th I don't think we can <laughs> improve anything by uh, from here so for example let me turn up all the features so i'm going to turn up planar mapping and also i'm going to turn up uh, displacements as well all right so even right now, we are getting the same kind of performance as well. I think now we are easily hitting 120. Uh, I mean, this is usual. Uh, yeah, by looking at these things, uh, if you enable both tessellation and also the triplanar, the performance drop is quite uh, small. If we compare that with grass, and it's, it's quite low. The reason for that is we don't actually do 
tessellation and displacement on the far and also the, for the triplanar for the far away distance we don't do triplanar mapping so by doing that we can reduce the performance impact so the point is you can use displacement and triplanar with your game and uh, the performance drop is really small and um, yeah it's, it's really cool to see that and if you're using a mobile app you're certainly aware of that like this really affects on your mobile application I'm, I'm planning to do another video on that so then uh, yeah please uh, be aware of the performance impact if you're targeting this for a mobile app all right uh, see you soon with something interesting bye